JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a text-based format that's designed to be human-readable, lightweight, and easy to transmit between a server and a web client. Its syntax is derived from JavaScript and thus the name. JSON is built on one of two structures, either a collection of name-value pairs, which is commonly realized as an object, or an ordered list of values, which in most languages is realized as an array. With the first class API, you need to mold both your request and response to handle JSONP. JSONP is a script tag injection, passing the response from the server into a user specified response. And in doing so, you can have cross domain JSON requests. As we've seen with the API inspector, we send a request to the server using this jQuery AJAX function and the data is returned as JSON wrapped in the success callback. First Class Web Services uses the name value pairs format for the JSON response. Here's a shortened sample of what the server returns when requesting the logged in user's preferences. In each pair, a colon separates the key, which is always a string, from the value, which itself can be a number, string, array, or another object. The nesting can go quite deep. So let's take a look at this a little further. When the data is received, it's assigned to a variable, and this then allows us to retrieve the individual values, typically using dot notation. For example, to retrieve the form ID value, we use data dot form ID. For writes, it's data dot writes. The my ML item key value is itself an object, and it contains a number of key value pairs, one of which is short info, whose value is another object with a series of key value pairs. If we wish to retrieve the nested object type value, we would need to use data dot my ML item dot short info dot object type. To get the web ID, it's just data dot my ML item dot web ID. If the key value is a string that would evaluate to an integer, we can't use dot notation. For example, to retrieve the value of the 8010 key, we can't use data dot my ML item dot 8010, as this would give a syntax error. If the key value is what I call a numeric string, you have to use the associative array format instead of dot notation for retrieving that value. So in this case, we could do a combination of dot notation in the beginning, followed with the associated array format. So data dot my ML item, and then enclose that numeric key value in quotes between brackets like this. In this last example, we see an abbreviated format of what is returned after a successful login. To retrieve the site name, we use data.loginReply.siteName. The reason I've chosen this example is because we see that the loginReply.vkeys value is an array of objects. In the real response, we get 10 vkey objects in the array, but to fit on the screen, I'm only showing 4. The vkey array of objects is retrieved by using data.loginReply.vkeys. If we want to retrieve this specific value, we can retrieve it because we know it is the second item in the array, array value 1, and it is the value of the v key key in the object key value pair. So data dot login reply dot v keys array item 1 dot v key. In the next video, I'll show you how you can use the API inspector and your browser's development tools to help you navigate this structure and to retrieve values and help you code your applications.